The characteristics of plasma can seem very different to the other phases of matter that make up our everyday life, but this video will put forward the idea that the universe is based on one universal process of continuous energy exchange, or continuous creation. This process is unfolding with the spontaneous absorption and emission of light photon energy with each new photon-electron coupling. Plasma is based on the same universal process of energy exchange. The only reason why it seems so different is because the electrons are not bound to the atoms in plasma. Because of this the process unfolds over an extremely large area with charge being spread over a finite volume, whose absolute size can be as large as a star, or a large region of interstellar space. In our everyday life with the electron bounded to the atoms the area of energy exchange is much smaller. Take flowing water for an example. Within flowing water we have hydrogen bonds breaking, and reforming releasing photon energy with the future unfolding relative to the flowing water. The interactive nature of this process can be seen in snowflake diversity being due to variations in photon oscillations linked to changes in atmosphere temperature. This forms an infinite variety of snowflake diversity with no two patterns of snowflakes being the same in the entire world. The similarity between plasma and the nature of our everyday life has been noticed before, and plasma got its name because of its similarity with blood plasma. But, the similarity does not stop there, the plasma physicist Hans Elfman said. From the cosmological point of view, the most important new space research discovery is probably the cellular structure of space. As has been seen in every region of space accessible to measurements, there are a number of cell walls, sheets of electric currents, which divide space into compartments with different magnetization, temperature, density, etc. In this image from the International Space Station we can see that plasma in the form of a candle flame naturally forms a spherical or cellular structure in zero gravity. The plasma is interacting with the environment on the two-dimensional surface of the sphere. The same cellular structure can be seen in living cells with all cell life having some voltage potential difference across their membrane, if the charge is more positive inside the cell membrane than it is outside it forms a gradient difference that the cell can use as a source of organized energy. Basically what we have is one universal interactive process with the movement of positive and negative charge. We see the same process of energy exchange in plant life with photosynthesis as a light-dependent reaction forming a concentration gradient between positive and negative charge. This is the entire trick of photosynthesis giving a plant the potential to do work. This is done by what is called an electron transport chain, in which energized electrons lose their energy in a series of reactions that capture the energy necessary to keep life living as a process over a period of time. This is explained in much greater detail in my other video than a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. The great thing about a process of symmetry forming and breaking is that it forms not just greater degrees of freedom for entropy or disorganization, but it also forms the potential for greater symmetry formation. As we see in the complexity of plasma and diversity of life. Because this is a universal geometrical process we see the same patterns in deep space as we see in nature. When this spherical symmetry is broken it forms the most beautiful of geometrical shapes, the spiral. In our everyday life this can be seen with the Fibonacci spiral being visible almost everywhere in nature. Even our sun forms a spiral in the form of the heliosphere stretching out far beyond the orbit of Pluto. 
In this theory this spiral broken symmetry is formed by energy slowing up the rate that time flows as a process of continuous creation, or energy exchange. Because this is a universal process it can be relative to something as small as the energy of growth of an individual plant. Or it can be relative something as large as an individual star like the sun distorting space, and time by rotating forming a spiral in the form of the heliosphere. It has been said that this is the electric universe theory, but it is fundamentally different, because it is based on the time dilation of Einstein's relativity, and the mathematics of quantum mechanics. The electric universe theory does not explain why electromagnetism is an innate part of all matter. In this theory the universe is a continuum with the future continuously coming into existence photon by photon with each new photon electron coupling, or dipole moment. This forms the movement of positive and negative charge with the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields. Therefore electromagnetism has to be an innate part of all matter, because it is part of the reason why we have a future, and a past forming an arrow of time. The light photon of quantum mechanics is the carrier of electromagnetic fields, and electrical potential is linked to the future potential within each individual reference frame. It would be logical to think of time, as expanding, or moving out in all directions as a process of continuous energy exchange in each reference frame. But at each photon-electron coupling, or dipole moment there is matter-antimatter annihilation in just one direction forming the timeline, or arrow of time in each individual reference frame. The great inventor of AC current Nikola Tesla said that, the day when we shall know exactly what electricity is will chronicle an event probably greater more important than any other recorded in the history of the human race. This theory agrees with him, because it is electrical activity in the brain that forms conscious awareness. By dumbing down consciousness to the level of to electrical activity in the brain that is aware of its own electrical potential this theory can explain conscious awareness as the most advanced part of this universal process. By doing this we can place each individual in the center of their own reference frame as an interactive part of this process that we comprehend as the passage of time. With a past that has gone forever, and a future that only exists in the form of a probability function, or quantum wave particle function. Therefore only, the moment of now, is real with each individual being able to look back in time in all directions from the center of their frame of reference at the beauty of the stars. It is this personalization of the brain being in the moment of now, in the center of its own reference frame that gives us the concept of mind. With each one of us having our own unique personal view of the beauty and uncertainty of life. We have an interactive universe at all levels of creation with plasma truly being the blood of the universe linking intergalactic space between the galaxies with the universe fizzing and cracking with electrical potential. To the potential of our everyday life with the wave particle duality of light acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer. This forms a blank canvas for life to form its own future relative to its position, and the energy, and momentum of its own actions. For this process to be totally universal gravity has to be linked to the probability of quantum mechanics, and the uncertainty of everyday life. One of the great misconceptions of science is that mass is the source of gravity, but this is not so energy and momentum are the source of gravity. This theory takes this to its logical conclusion explaining gravity as a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. This can be seen mathematically with both electromagnetic force and the gravitational force sharing the inverse square law.
In this theory Newton's apple does not fall to the ground because of the downward force of gravity, but because of the upward momentum of electromagnetism, or light. Gravity is not a real force at all. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy, because it has the greatest time dilation, or slowest flow of time. This can be understood, if we think of the universe as a continuum of continuous creation, the energy of the creative process will distort space-time by slowing up the rate that time flows forming a vortex. This is a totally dynamic interactive process an object will form its own space-time vortex relative to its energy and momentum. We have the equivalence principle between gravity and acceleration with the energy that forms acceleration forming inertia in the direction that the object is moving as part of a universal creative process. The same interactive geometrical process can also be seen in Kepler's universal laws of planetary motion. In Kepler's second law as a planet moves along its path, it sweeps out an equal area segment in an equal time. But the planet moves faster near the sun than when it is distant. So there is a form of geometrical symmetry, but the symmetry seems to be broken by the shape of the elliptical orbit. The fundamental geometry of this process is spherical, but the planets have broken this symmetry forming elliptical orbits relative to their energy and momentum with varying speed relative to their distance from the Sun. If the planet's orbits were circular there would be no variation in speed and we would have perfect symmetry in movement space and time. In this theory this is because the time dilation formed by the Sun is spherical therefore a planet in circular orbit will not encounter a gravitational difference that is formed by a geometrical process that is relative to time dilation. The light photon of quantum mechanics is the carrier of the electromagnetic force forming one universal process of energy exchange. This dynamic theory of gravity links gravitational potential, electrical potential, and quantum potential with the potential uncertainty of our everyday life. At the smallest scale this universal process is represented mathematically by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics representing the same uncertainty we have with any potential future event. With the Planck constant representing a constant of action in the geometrical process we see and feel as the continuum of time. Quantum physics and classical physics are different aspects of the same process with classical physics representing processes over a period of time and in Newton's differential equations with the mathematics of quantum mechanics representing the physics of time as a physical process. The continuously changing world of our everyday life that we measure as a period of time is formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light represented by the quantum wave particle function with a probabilistic future continuously coming into existence with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment. The main effect this process of energy exchange has on us is the aging process, but above all this is a creative process that forms the uniqueness of every sunrise and the diversity of every life form. The only explanation is that the universe is infinite, an eternal process forming an infinity of possibilities with creation being in the hand and eye of the beholder.